So in Fusion, sketch dimensions are critical to getting what you want out of your designs. There's a lot of tips and tricks when it comes to placing certain dimensions that I'm going to show. I'm going to show some shortcuts. I'll show some pro tips on how to even add some more intelligence to your sketch. So the first thing, if you don't add the right dimensions to your sketch, it's not going to behave the way you want. It's going to go crazy like this one, right? And when you click on a line and look at the length, 45 millimeters, that's way off, right? So you're never going to get what you want unless you add dimensions. So first you need to be editing a sketch and then you come up and find create sketch dimension. You'll notice that it's D is your shortcut. You can hit D for dimension and that will wake up this next year cursor and now we can get started. The first thing is the order of operations. So when you click a line, it's going to first ask you to place where this dimension goes in space. I could put it right here on top of a bunch of stuff. That's a bad idea. I can bring it up. I can bring it to the middle. I can bring it below. This is very helpful when it comes to keeping it separate of other dimensions that are sharing space. Place the dimension in space and immediately you'll have a dialogue that asks you if you'd like to change it. Right now I see 62.59 whatever. If I try type in 63, it's going to update the line and actually lengthen it or shorten it to make that dimension a reality. So if you have a bunch of cluttered dimensions, that will make your life a lot harder. It's a great idea not to put dimensions on top of each other because it makes editing and visualizing the model a lot harder. Now, one thing when it comes to dimensioning, if you're not using constraints, it's going to make your life even harder. And here's why. If I have three circles and they all should be 15, that's a lot of work to put in the values, make them all 15. Then it comes to changing them. Now, there is a really cool pro tip I'll show you later on how to kind of link them all up. But even that, the best practice here would be to place one of those dimensions and use constraints. So I'm going to select all three of the circles or holes and I'll make them equal. And now all I need is one dimension to drive them all, making life a lot easier. What's cool about this is if you do this correctly over your entire sketch, you may only have a handful of dimensions that you change and the whole thing updates how you want it to. So I just made a video covering constraints. If you'd like to learn more about that, check that out. It's in the description down below. Okay, for this next one, it's going to be a struggle for you if you don't understand that there's a difference between what you select. So in this case, when I select two lines, I don't expect to see an angle unless there actually is one. So in this case, these two lines, they're not drawn vertically. And so now I see an angle. But if I come back to that constraints thing we were talking about, and I make sure that this is vertical and this is vertical, and I select the two lines, it's going to give me a distance. Great. So when I select two lines, I'm going to get a distance if they're parallel. If I select two points, for example, how about this point and this point, this is going to give me some different options. When I hover out, you'll notice I can hover down, and this is the horizontal distance between them. If I hover out to the right, this is the vertical distance, and this is maybe the true distance in between the two points, or straight line distance. Next, if you select an arc, you're going to get an R next to your dimension, and that means radius. And if you type in your value, it gives you a radius. Now, if you do a circle, it's going to give you this circle with a slash going through, and that means diameter. You can place that, and I'll talk about driven in just a second, but you can show circles as a diameter and a radius for arcs. Now, what about angled lines? So if you choose this line and this vertical line, I can place it a number of ways. Maybe I want this 30 degrees. Maybe I want this interior dimension. Maybe I want that 30 there. There's a lot of options here and you can place what you want and then type in the value and the whole thing will adjust to solve what you've defined for that angle. Now, what if the angle isn't quite what you want? You want to put this on a table saw. You want to do a cutting operation where it would be helpful to maybe see the angle displayed a different way. In this case, what if I put in a line, make it construction by hitting X, 
and now add the angle dimension, I can go from there to there and make it more specific to what I need it to show. What about dimensions that are extra? And that's called a reference or driven dimension in Fusion. Because this one is concentric and it's being defined as it's equal to all these others, if I place this dimension here for the diameter, it's going to be 15. But when I place another, it's going to be a driven dimension. It'll give you a warning. You are allowed to turn this off if you don't want to see that again. Just remember that driven really just means you can't change the number here. You can change it where it's being driven elsewhere. Like in this case, if I change this number, it will adjust it. So let's try it, 12. But this driven with parentheses means that it's a reference value. So it can be helpful to see it if it is just for your design to see these and visualize it. Just remember the parentheses means you can't change it without changing somewhere else on the sketch. What if you change your mind and you want this one to be the one that's in control? I would simply delete it and delete the one that is in control and place that dimension. And now that one is the one that you can drive. Now, what are we missing in this sketch? Now I have some blue entities. If I drag a blue entity, it'll tell me what's needing to be defined. So in this case, I haven't defined how long this line is. When I place that and type in the value I want, now I can't drag that line anymore, but it will drag upwards. Okay, so now I need to define or dimension how tall this line is. We'll make that 31. What's missing here? Okay, so I could make this tangent. That's a constraint. These circles, I want them to line up and be horizontal with each other, but I want their distance to be 20 from their edges, and I want a distance from the bottom. Great, what's missing? Well, if I go over to my sketch, I'll notice that it doesn't have a little lock. It looks mainly black, so that's good. Any blue lines means it'll move. So when I look at this and I try to figure out what still moves, this brings up a pro tip. Okay, you ready? So sometimes these things happen where you've got extra construction line, or you might even have a line on top of a line. So if I accidentally put this line in here, I now have an extra line. If I were to box select this, sometimes it'll wake up additional points that I didn't know were there. So I see this extra point here. I could delete that line. It's not actually hurting anything, but I can get rid of that little line. And so it's not needing to be defined. And then I can dimension even this reference line if I wanted to. And now you'll notice the little lock on the sketch. That means it's fully defined. You're not missing anything, which is a best practice. And hey, by the way, this is a tricky one. Just so you know, when you're sketching in Fusion, it's totally okay that your sketch isn't fully defined. Here I have a rectangle that's 85. I didn't finish it. I extrude this and now send it to my 3D printer. That's great. That's totally going to work. Don't stress yourself out worrying about getting your sketches just perfect, especially when you're just getting started with a simple design. But if I was going to spend a lot of money and have this fabricated, send this to a machinist, I definitely want to make sure my sketches are tight and finished and fully defined. What about a slot? When you come to dimension it, by default, if I select the two arcs, it wants to go to the center. And so what I do is place that, and that looks great. But what if you actually wanted to cover from the outer arc to this outer arc, or maybe half and half, right? So we'll delete it. I'm about to place this. I'm going to right click and choose the arc tangent. And now it's going to go to that arc tangent. I can right click on this one before placing, make sure it says arc tangent. And now if I place it, it goes outer arc to outer arc. Now, what about a circle? So I was talking about this earlier. You can dimension the circle. It's a diameter. If you ever want the opposite, let's do an arc. This arc, can you remember what this will be? It's a radius, right? What if you want to flip these? Right click on it and choose. You may have to hit escape a few times. Right click, choose radius. A 
escape escape right click and choose diameter and so now it's displayed as a diameter now what about when you have a slightly more complicated model like this exhaust port i designed for my bamboo labs 3d printer i want to come back and edit some of the sketches and change dimensions now you probably know that you can come in and double click and wake up the dimensions and then change them and update but here's a really cool one because you put those dimensions on if you go to the sketch make sure that it's showing you can right click on it and choose show dimensions this will wake it up and now you can simply come in with the live model the 3d model showing make this a 165 and make this 138 and the whole thing updates and it resolves everything i love this this is super cool all right, let's get into some slightly more pro tips when it comes to Fusion. Did you know that you can do math in Fusion? So when I'm doing this height here, it's 21. I actually could add 0 0.05 to it and hit enter, and it does that math for me. You can divide, you can multiply it by pi, you can do whatever you need to do, and you'll get that math, those values done right in the dialog. Taking this a step further, you actually can reference one dimension to another. All right, so what I want to do is I want this value to be this one. So I click this value, it writes in D16, hit enter. And so now it resolves this with an FX on it. The FX means that it's an equation, it's driven. And so this dimension is linked to this one. Let's get really fancy now. So let's say that you want to introduce a, a proper equation and you maybe want all of these values to be related, right? So maybe it's the thickness or the height. So what I'll do is come in and say height equals 65. What we just did was create a new parameter for fusion to use. I'm going to delete that dimension and now I want to make this one tied to the height. So what I'm going to do is say it's height and you can see it references the 65 and I'm going to say it's height divide by 2. Hit enter and it solves it. And now I could even set that this is the same thing. It's that height multiplied by 0.45. 45%. And now it's also driven by that parameter. So it's a really cool, fast way to change it. If you'd like to see your parameters and control them, come up to modify, change parameters. And now you've got that height value at 65. You could change it here or back in the sketch. So if I make this 64, everything is going to update all of these values that are driven from that. And hey, I know I covered a lot today on dimensions. So if you'd like a cheat sheet on kind of everything I covered, I'll put that in the link in the description below. You can get that for free from my website. And so we're working our way through all the features in Fusion. I'll see you guys in the next video.